so far this cycle really hasn't been for me uh and that's okay that's not a terrible thing but starting off we had magic who was someone i had high expectations for high hopes for and she she's not bad but she didn't reach those levels that i thought she was going to she, she's fine bishop was a surprise hero for me i didn't really expect too much from him i was kind of indifferent about bishop but he's been a lot of fun to play really enjoy him iceman i haven't really enjoyed that much i think he's okay and jubilee has for me has fallen flat in her face i do not enjoy playing her whatsoever and that's really what heroes nowadays kind of come down to me is that i want an interesting hook and mechanic and i want to have fun right that's, that's what i want and i would like heroes to be built out be able to be built out differently though that last one's becoming less important because we have so many heroes now that i don't need to worry about heroes being as versatile anymore like it still matters but it doesn't matter as much as it used to but Fun is still up there as like the number one thing and um, just a, a new and interesting and unique hook that that kind of makes them, you know, stand out a little bit. That, that's kind of what I look for. So going into Nightcrawler and Kurt of Wagner, uh, I was not i was trying to keep my expectations low right i wasn't trying to get too hyped for him i feel like a lot of people were super hyped for him and a part of me had me worried that the reason they were is just because i know nightcrawl is a really popular character i'm not a big x-men person so i really am indifferent about nightcrawler and most of the x-men so him as a character didn't really make a difference to me um now i know for a lot of other people it did. And my worry was that he wasn't actually going to be that good, that he was getting a lot of hype because people just really like, again, the character of Nightcrawler. So when I opened up Nightcrawler and started playing through him and started messing around with him, I, I realized there's a lot there. There's a lot of fun to be had with Nightcrawler. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by him. Now, I don't think he's a top five hero for me per se, and we'll do official rankings at the end. But Top 10, I could, I could possibly see that. He, he's really fun. He's really dynamic and really interesting. And we'll get into all that. Now, really quick, before we get into the actual review and look through the cards and all that fun stuff, really important note. It's just my opinion, right? If you disagree with my opinion, that's totally cool. Totally respect that. That's, that's absolutely fine. I encourage you to leave your review opinions down below in the comments. Uh, let people know what you think about Nightcrawler or maybe this wave or whatever you want. But that's just important note. It's just my opinion. Uh, so what we're going to do is go through the Nightcrawler cards first, and then we'll talk about the hero overall and my opinions of him. Now, really quick before we dive into the rest of this video, if you don't know, you can actually listen to this video on your favorite podcast player. We've been doing the all the talking head videos like this one uh, on all the podcasts on Apple, Spotify, the Samsung, I guess, was a big one because a lot of people are downloading from there. Different places. If you can't find it, let me know and I'll get it onto that that service. Uh, but I really appreciate it. A lot of people have been listening to the podcast, which is really cool. Um, I didn't think it was going to be as popular as it was. So that's been really phenomenal. And also, second link down below is a link to the e-newsletter. It gives you weekly updates of what's going on here. Uh, some of the bigger videos for the past week. Some board game deals I find from around online. So make sure to sign up for that down below. Uh, and make sure that when you get your email, like check your spam folder and whatever, it comes out on Mondays at noon Eastern. If you don't see it, check your spam. It's probably there or uh, on your introductory email, make sure to reply to it so that uh, Gmail doesn't just put in spam. Okay. Anyway, let's start with Nightcrawler's alter ego, alter ego uh, Kurt Avagna. He's a three recovery, which I, I know. I, I, okay. I know people are going to judge me for this. Three recoveries on the lower side. It's the lowest amount of recovery out there. I know it's the most popular amount to use for recovery, but it's still the lowest. Both things can be true. I like four recovery. Personally, I'm a fan. A lot of the heroes I gravitate toward, not all of them, but a lot of them have four recovery because it's really nice when I flip down to actually recover a lot and not a third of my life. Anyway, had to get that out of the way. <laughs> Uh, so six hand size, nine hit points, nine hit points is on the lower side of things, which had me a little bit worried, but once we get into Nightcrawler's defense, there is nothing to worry about. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so action, I really like this as an action, not set up, search your deck for a copy of BAMP and add it to your hand. Again, important note, it's your deck and not your discard pile. This is important with timing later on and when to flip down and all that fun stuff. Cause sometimes a lot of BAMPs end up in your discard pile and it gets a little rough. You can still work around it. But it gets a little rough. So let's get to the Nightcrawler side of things. A 2-1-3 stat line. And that alone would have been solid stat line. We'll get into that in a little bit. But that's a, a pretty solid stat line. 
Uh, he drops down to five hand size, so has nine hit points. Rapid teleportation. <clears throat> Spend one resource of any type. Return a copy of Banff from your discard pile to your hand. In my opinion, Nightcrawler and X-Jet are like must-haves. Like you have to run the X-Jet support with Nightcrawler. In my opinion. His cards, we'll get into the rest of them, are so cheap that resource generators really don't matter. But to have a dedicated resource generator to just get Banff back from your discard pile is massive in my opinion it's absolutely huge once i made that switch and started doing that it just nightcrawler just took off on another level for me it just felt smoother it felt more comfortable uh it was really really strong really good so definitely you I, in my opinion you need like a generic resource generator just for that i don't use it for anything else i just use it for that so anyway take that for what it is but if you haven't done that yet i highly recommend trying to do that all right, so next we have Day Tripper, which they don't even have the images up. I uh, let's see. Actually, I wonder if Hall of Heroes has it. All right, so we're going to switch over to the Hall of Heroes side of things for these images. But so Day Tripper is a two cost ally, signature ally, uh, two 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 stat line, Mystic response. After Day Tripper enters play, search your deck and discard pile for a copy of Banff and attach it to an enemy. Deal one damage to each enemy with a copy of Banff. Now, this was interesting because my worry with Nightcrawler was how would he be with minions out on the board, right? How well he would he be able to handle minions? Um, and with cards like this and some uh, another one that we'll get into later, this was actually really nice to be able to just ping off Tufts or get uh, a bamf where you need to go. Or again, if you have a bamf in hand, play that somewhere, then get Day Tripper in to get a, a bamf from like the discard pile to put in somewhere else. And then now you can... Uh, ping damage in several spots and maybe set up another card that we'll get into in a second but i really like how day tripper works i don't think she needs to be played all the time per se um but to be able to use it at certain times it really works well again depending on how the timing works and whatnot uh, but there were times especially with a lot of minions or there was like tough statuses or whatever it was nice to run a day tripper to kind of ping that off all right next we have kurt's chapel it's a one cost support Kurt Wagner gets a plus one recovery. So again, now gets him up to four, which is a respectable amount, not like three. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just not going to let that go. Um, alter Ego response. After you make a basic recovery, exhaust Kurt's chapel and choose a player. That player uh, draws one card, which is really interesting that they allow you to like pick somebody else, which is kind of cool, especially if like you're flipping down and you don't really want to draw a card, right? Like it's more beneficial for a teammate to draw a card. Like I really like how they did this. I think this is, this is a pretty cool way of doing it. Um, so yeah, big fan of this card. It's one of the supports I, I love running, especially at one cost. I mean, one cost to get one extra recovery is massive, but to also get a, a card draw with it is, is huge. All right. So <laughs> This is this is a big card here. So a two cost upgrade is Kurt's Cutlass. Uh, counts as two restricted cards, which okay, that's fine. It can count as two. I have no problem with that. Uh, Nightcrawler gets plus one attack, plus one defense. So now this pushes him up from. Let's go back uh, to Nightcrawler really fast. He was a two one three stat line, so now he's a two two four stat line, four defense, and gains retaliate one, which is just. Broken's not the right word, but man, it's getting close to broken, right? Like that's four defense, four defense. Like that's insane. A lot of villains are not going to touch you with four defense. It, it's kind of crazy, especially if you play standard a lot, like you're going to be really solid early on. Massive card. Definitely want to get this out early. Getting the retaliate early is really nice, especially with a, a card that we'll see in a little bit. Just it's just a crazy card in general. Um, so then he has the prehensile, maybe I'm saying that right. Tail, uh, one cost upgrade to superpower card. You can control one additional upgrade that has the restricted keyword. Sure, why not? Uh, you can exhaust the tail, generate a wild resource for an event. So again, we can't use it on Nightcrawler's uh, main action here, where it says spend one resource any type to return a copy of Bam for your discard pile to your hand. We can't use that because his tail can only be used for events. But he's an event heavy character. And to get this card out there to, again, run most of your events, like really strong, really good. He's got a really good uh, kind of economy and, and, and deck in here. All right. So Banff is the big one we need to talk about. There are three copies of Banff. A lot of people speculated, wondering if there would be more or less. There are three. 
the zero cost upgrade attached to an enemy max one per enemy so you cannot stack these which you probably don't really want to anyway but that's fine a hero interrupt not a force interrupt which is massive we'll get into that in a second when attached enemy attacks discard this card declare nightcrawler as a defender without exhausting him so now again if you have the cutlass uh, upgrade you can now defend against the enemy for four without exhausting which is crazy right and like the uh, and if you have any other defense triggering cards they now can trigger um because you are now defending right you have now declared uh, nightcrawler as a defender without exhausting which is it, it just it's a crazy card the way that it works and what's interesting is there's there's a couple things with this card that i found really interesting so one let's look at it from solo perspective first and multiplayer so solo perspective if you're just playing against one villain and there's not a lot of minions in the deck like the villain ain't gonna touch you for like the longest time like it's kind of crazy as long as again you have like the x jet out to keep getting banned back in from your discard pile from when you use this card like you're just going to keep getting Banff back out on the table on the villain. Like it's crazy. It's honestly kind of crazy how it works. And it's incredibly strong. So my biggest worry then was, well, how do you handle it with uh, several minions, right? If there's a bunch of minions on the table, how is that going to work and interact? And what I found is it gets tougher for sure. It's definitely hard, but it becomes a stronger balancing act of, okay, I need to keep Banff always on the villain. And if I can get Banff on a minion as well, really strong, or I can just do, you know, the old fashioned exhausted defend and defend against a minion that way. Now, when it starts getting like three or four minions out there, you're probably going to start having a bad time. It's going to be rough. It's still doable, but it's really rough. This is when Nightcrawler, I think, has to start relying more on allies to kind of help him out then. Uh, but it's definitely strong. Now, let's switch over to the multiplayer side. Now, I don't play a lot of four player multiplayer, so... It's harder for me to imagine how it works, but I will say in two-player multiplayer, playing two-handed, it's really fascinating with Banff because you your teammate does not have to worry about defending, basically. Generally speaking, they might have to worry about the minions on the table, but that's okay. Because for the most part, what I was doing was I was putting a Banff on the villain, let's say, and when the villain would attack, I would Banff the first time so I didn't have to exhaust defend, and I would defend for my teammate or whatever. And then um when I was getting attacked again for my turn or the other turn or whatever, I would just exhaust the defend. So I was able to defend for my teammate pretty much all the time, which is crazy. Like it's such a strong way to defend for your, your teammates. And I know a lot of people are saying for Iceman, oh, Iceman is really great at defending uh, because of like the ice wall card or whatever, like the upgrades you can put on the enemy. And like, they're fine. They're good. To me, this is like a stronger way of doing it. Especially again, with four defense and being able to retaliate each time, really strong. And again, I'm getting the Banff card back every single time because of X jet. So it's maybe in three and four player that, that, that strategy is a little harder to pull off. And I could totally see that. But as far as two player goes, like when I was playing two handed and uh, uh, just kind of going through the motions, like, <sighs> Like the other person did not have to worry. I teamed up with like a Wolverine or whatever when they're just going to go nuts and be aggressive and destroy everything. It was crazy. It was absolutely uh, crazy strong. So anyway, um, really fascinating card. I, this mechanic I really like. It's it's very strong, but it's not broken. It's it's like it's like try, it's pushing the upper strength limit of like that design design. I think of like not having to exhaust, but you're still defending. Like I don't know how you could take it further past that but <laughs> it was phenomenal getting there i mean it was so good so anyway really enjoyed this hook of banff and how that works i think that's really really cool and really really fascinating so anyway really big fan all right so then we need to get into uh his next event port and punch uh it's an attack card what does he have two of them yeah he has two of them so port and punch attack superpower card um again you could run his tail to generate a resource for this deal three damage to an enemy Meh. deal three damage to each enemy with banff attached now when we get back into the minion slaying thing uh if you could put three bamps out and three different minions and then play this and deal three 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 kind of crazy right i mean that's that's actually it would be three damage and then three 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 so the possibility of uh, total spread out three, six, nine, 12 damage, right? Not to the same enemy, of course, but spread out. 
even two for six, right? If you deal three damage to an enemy, and then let's say that enemy is the villain, right? And then that villain also has Banff, and now you can do two for six on the, the villain. Two for six isn't bad either, right? It's it's definitely not a bad attack card. I found myself using this as his main attack card for the most part. Uh, so I was pretty happy with, with it overall. Um, but again, you can use it kind of for like clearing out minions if you're able to get a bunch of Banffs. Now the trick there or the tricky part, I should say, is that a lot of times what ends up happening for me is that I would do a big old port and punch shot, right? And hopefully took out all the minions and then all the bamps are gone. And then to get them back is kind of a pain, right? Because you can use your ability to get them back, but past that, it's kind of hard to get them from the discard pile. Again, because your alter ego, even if you flip down, will only allow you to search your deck. So it was kind of like, okay, I have to start cycling through cards or I start have to start kind of not using Banffs all the time, which gets us back into Banff for a second. Um, it's a hero interrupt and not a force interrupt, which is really nice because there are times when it's like, okay, I have a ton of life. You know, uh, I have an ally to chump block. I have a Banff out there that I just recalled from the discard pile, but I want to start getting more than back out into my hand to do other things. It's nice that, okay, I'm going to chump block with an ally. I don't need to use Banff because it's not a force error up. That's actually massive, and it's really, really nice they did it this way. So, again, if I want a chump blocker for a round, so I just don't want Nightcrawl to have to, like, keep losing Banff, and I need to get back in for other minions or whatever it may be, or for future cards, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, it's really, really nice to be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, big, big fan of that. But that was the trickiest part, is if I had a bunch of strong minions trying to get them all out was rough and or trying to get all the bamps back to try and like port and punch them was kind of rough so anyway he, there's finagling there he, he can get overwhelmed but it's cool they have a card like this all right so next we have teleport drop the two cost event superpower this is like his big attack card and really quick side note for a second three for eight was always like the thing right and it seems like we're slowly getting away from three for eight damage cards like you don't see them as much outright like usually like Go a little bit lower and they added a best special thing or they like did do damage here and there and this and that and whatever and this is an interesting card because it's obviously better than three for eight but there's only one copy of teleport drop and on top of it you have discarded a copy of ban from an enemy which is kind of interesting and thematically it makes sense um but it's kind of interesting that you have to play a ban out there teleport drop and then deal eight damage to the enemy and stun them and even if you can't stun the enemy it's quite all right because you were able to do eight damage for two, which is really strong. It's just that because there was only one copy out there, like if I got this early on in my hand, it felt like, okay, it's a while before I can cycle back around in my deck to get it again. And then like if it's on the bottom of the deck, like I'm really waiting a long time and sometimes just the timing doesn't work out. So I don't mind the card, but I, I personally felt like I could never get to line up to what I needed to do, right? Like I always felt like I was slightly off on the timing of when I need to drop teleport uh drop or i didn't want to get the banff off the villain let's say because i wanted to defend with them and they were like a steady or stalwart villain now obviously if you stun them when they have banff on then it doesn't matter but for steady or stalwart it's like well like, i don't really want to do that because i want to keep the banff on so the teleport drop doesn't make sense so now i'm also waiting for the ability for me to get another banff uh which again if i save a banff on there and not use that to uh, uh, block for Nightcrawler one time, like it's not as bad because you can get more of them, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, it was a weird card. Um, it's a good card. It's definitely good. It just, it felt like it never worked. The majority, the majority of the time, it never felt like it worked the way I wanted it to work, unfortunately. So, all right, then we have Scout Ahead, which he has three copies of, now two copies of. It's his Thwart card. The one cost event, remove three threat from the scheme. One th one for three is very strong. You may discard a copy of Bamf from your hand to remove three threat from another scheme, which is interesting the way that they do this. So, uh, removing it from your hand, okay. One for three is still good, right? One for three is still a good amount to remove threat by. Not upset by that, and then I can exhaust for another two if I need be. Like that's fine. It's interesting that it's removed three from another scheme. Now, maybe again in a multiplayer game with more side schemes or more personal side schemes or whatever it may be, this makes more sense. It never felt like it made a ton of sense for me. It never felt like I was like, oh, I'm I'm able to remove basically six total threat. Like it was very few and far between that I actually used it because again, if I had Banff, maybe there wasn't another Banff, so I didn't want to like quote unquote waste that bamf right it was it was a very weird 
way to do things. So I don't know. I felt like generally speaking, I was just using it as a one for three threat removal, which as a solo player, totally good, right? Totally fine. Enjoyed that card. Um, but I rarely was discarding another copy of Ban from my hand to remove three threat from another scheme. Maybe that was just me and how my games worked out, but that's just kind of what I was finding for the most part. Uh, Port Away is a zero cost event. Discard a copy of BAM from your hand, change forms, and ready your identity. Again, interesting. Um, if you're if you flip down the alter ego and exhaust to heal up, and then use port away to discard a ban from your hand, change back into or ready up and change back into your hero form, and then use a resource to get banff back in. Like, <laughs> excuse me, that combination works. Again, it just felt like it was kind of like a weird timing thing that I couldn't get to work the majority of the time. And Port Away only has one card. There's only one copy of Port Away. So again, it was a lot of times like I felt like I wasn't getting this when I needed it. Because with my luck, I had just flipped down the previous turn to heal up. And then I came pop back up. And then, oh, I got this card this time. Like, it just, maybe it's just my luck. Maybe I just had bad luck on, on a lot of things. But I always felt like I had like really weird luck with this card. And, and just, again, like the idea of it's fine. It just felt like I couldn't ever get it to like really work. I know we have had a few heroes that use kind of this mechanic and pretty much every single time I just, I can't get it to work the way that, you know, I want to. Uh, all right. His last two cards are Tally Ho. It's a one cost event. After Banff makes Nightcrawler the defender of an attack, return that copy of Banff to your hand, deal three damage to an attacking enemy. Massive card, right? The fact that you get Banff back. So again, when we talk about going against other minions or maybe your, your, the other Banffs are in the, you know, deck or the, the deck or the discard pile doesn't really matter which, but you don't have your resource generator built out yet to get it back. Uh, Tally is a really strong card. One for three attack and getting Banff back is massive. Um, it's a really good defense card. Again, just being able to defend, or I'm sorry, deal three damage on the attack, plus you're going to retaliate them as well. It's really cool. Uh, so I really like Tally Ho and the way that it works. I think it was pretty, uh, pretty fun card overall. Um, so I was a big fan of that. So overall, Nightcrawler's kit, <laughs> really strong, really good. So let's talk about Crisis of Faith Obligation. Um, so you give to the Kurt Wagner player. Uh, you may flip to Alter Ego form. Choose to either exhaust Kurt Wagner and remove this card from the game or discard each attack and defense event from your hand. Discard Obligation. Obviously, if there's no attack and defense events in your hand, this card works out great. And that only happened like once or twice to me. But generally speaking, it's a pretty rough card. Um or can be a rough card if you can't exhaust, exhaust Kurt. If you can exhaust Kurt Wagner, then you're okay. Uh, but that doesn't always work out that way. All right, so uh, Nightcrawl's Nemesis as as uh, as a Zell. As a Zell? A Zeal? A Zeal Zell? I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. Uh, two, three, three stat line, quick strike, and as a Zell, cannot have upgrades attached. As a boost card, you deal this to Kurt Wagner as a face down counter card. So here's what's interesting about it. He doesn't, like on paper, that stat line get quick strike like stings, right? Obviously not great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Now it does think it's the boost card that he like pops back in and like gives a deal with them. Okay, so if that was it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be awful, right? You can deal with it. You can put focus on it. You can still exhaust the fend. Yes, you can't put Banff on him, but you can get around that, right? It's not a big deal. Well, Brimstone Dimensions, a uh, side scheme, uh, comes in with five threat, extra bad card each round. Uh, when defeated, the player who defeated this scheme finds Azazel, Azazel, and deals him to themselves as a face down encounter card. So you have a card that like gets him back out. So first, um, you want to find, or you want to probably get rid of this card first. You give Azazel to yourself again as a face down counter card. He's going to pop up and quick strike you. Just prepare for that. Getting quick strike a lot stinks. Uh, so just, you know, have allies out to the block you for it. Now, his sword attachment, you attach it to him, otherwise attached to the villain, gives him plus one attack. He gains piercing, which I didn't really run a lot of tough status cards on Nightcrawler, so that wasn't a big thing, but I could see how that could be a pain for other players. Uh, after attached enemy attacks, you discard one random card from your hand to discard this card. Luckily, it goes away after one-time use, but it's still terrible because you have to discard a card from your hand, right? Like, that's just annoying. <laughs> I don't want to discard cards from my hand, but... You have to watch out for that, which which can be rough. And then lastly, two treasury cards, Brim, a Brimstone Strike, Alter Ego, Find Azazel, and Reveal Him. He schemes. Goody. And then Hero, Find Azazel, and Reveal Him, which he's going to quick strike you. So basically, you're just going to keep getting hit for three. And it's really annoying. It can be rough at times. Um, but again, 
having allies out there that kind of like help absorb some of that damage or just old fashioned uh, exhaust block is really the way to go with that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's rough or it can be really rough. So anyway, that's his uh, nemesis. Really just annoying. I mean, not like it's weird because on paper it doesn't seem overly hard and I wasn't that worried about it at first. And then it started happening to me because, you know, naturally it would. And I was like, wow, this is really just like, just annoying. Like I don't know how to explain it other than that. That is just like an annoying nemesis. All right. So overall thoughts. I don't like Kurt in protection. He comes in protection. There's some really good protection cards in there. So it's not uh, an argument against the, the cards, but it's not, it's not a, a, it's not a good aspect for him, I feel like. My issue with Kurt was I always felt like I couldn't do enough damage. So I wanted him in aggression. Now, generally speaking, I am an aggression type player. I love playing aggression, especially in true solo. I think it's incredibly strong and really good. Even Not even like rush strategy aggression, but just having aggression in general. Like There's so many strong cards now uh, for aggression. So uh, with that being said, like I didn't like him in protection. I, I He just didn't gel well with me. I'm not a great protection player. You know, aggression, he made a lot of sense. Justice, he was fine. Leadership, I thought he was pretty good too because, again, just getting allies out there to kind of shore up your weaknesses. Basically, how you run any leadership deck at this point uh, is is was strong as well. So, Justice was fine. Again, I felt like the vast majority of time, vast majority of time when I struggled with Nightcrawler was because I felt like I didn't have enough attack, right? I wasn't able to do big enough amounts of damage. I, I could do little bits of damage here and there with like port and punch or whatever. Teleport drop, I couldn't always get to line up when I needed to. But I never felt like I got massive attacks, which was like my biggest issue for the most part. So anyway, playing aggression, really loved it. Leadership probably next, then justice, then protection. Um, and then like a basic build, I guess you could do after that. And then pool doesn't exist in my opinion. Um, no, obviously it does. So it uh, it, it's an interesting way. I really thought he was going to be kind of relegated to just protection. I really thought he was going to be like, that's all you could do with him. But really, he, he, in my opinion, is his worst aspect, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, overall, what do I think about Nightcrawler? Uh, like I said, I'm pleasantly surprised. I think, I think he's really good. I think he's really interesting. Uh, I think he's really strong. I think he's really fun. I think he's really unique in the way that he works. I mean, it just... He has all the things that I look for nowadays, and he was well executed. He was it was a really good job. Um, Caleb was the designer of this one, and he he did a phenomenal job. It gives me hope for the the final one with Magneto. I I'm on the fence with how Magneto will be, uh, which you know is fine. Like he, I can go either way on him, but I'm happy with Nightcrawler. I feel like I really got a hero that again. I don't know if I had any heroes to this point that would have been top 10 contenders for my my favorite heroes of all time. Uh, but Nightcrawler, I could see be on that list. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Like I said, if you agree or disagree, I want to hear all of it because I'm always fascinated by it. How do you like to play Nightcrawler? Is there any interesting uh, mechanics or things that you found that work really well for you? Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that fun stuff. And I will see you all next time.